Even in the information authorities are releasing tonight. It's fun because here um, we get a little piece of, you know, being able to, you know, express ourselves a little bit. A fun way to celebrate Cinco de Mayo and small businesses come together for a great time. What occurred at the meeting between Speaker Nancy Pelosi and the Ukraine president. And we're in store for a muggy night. Details coming up next. Live from the KFDM studios, you're watching KFDM 6 News, The Weekend Report. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Mello Styles. Our stop top story tonight, a fight between two inmates at the federal prison in Beaumont leaves one inmate dead. Prison staff responded to the fight at about 1030 this morning and transported inmate Eric Germain Lede to the hospital with life threatening injuries. The 35 year old was pronounced dead at the hospital. Lede had been sentenced to the Northern District of Texas to a 37 month sentence for receipt of firearms while under felony indictment. He had been at the Beaumont prison since February of 2021. The second inmate involved in the fight was treated for minor injuries by prison staff. Today was a great day, great weather. It was a little up there a little bit, but it was a great day to kick off May. Aaron Mack is in the Weather Center to tell us how much longer these temps will last. Aaron. Yes, Mello, it was a great day overall. Saw a little wetness come down and some drizzle in between that around the mid-afternoon. But overall, we saw sunshine come back out, plenty of cloud covering. As we take a look at one of our cams right now, this is brought to you by Do Good and Altus Lumberton Hospital. Overlooking Lumberton Hospital in Lumberton, and things are still sitting pretty good right now temperature-wise. 75 degrees, partly to mostly cloudy skies. We'll see mostly cloudy skies before the night's all said and done. A light southeast breeze at 3 miles per hour and 90% relative humidity right now so if you're out and about you're definitely feeling that mugginess definitely feels a little bit warmer than 75 degrees satellite imagery for the last six hours you're looking at that cloud cover that's starting to move in from the west as we continue to move on again cloud cover looks to really be the story as we move into early monday morning where we may see a few possible showers but for right now here's what you need to know about the temperatures today you thought maybe middle 80s. Well, we saw some 90s out there. Colmanil, Woodville, those were the highs today. Kuntz was at 90 as well. 92 was Silsby's high. Evadale and Buna both are at a high of 90. Here in the Triangle, didn't quite reach 90, but almost there. Bayou Den, 88. Double A Ranch, 88. Those were the highs there as well. And for Winnie, and around the, right, right along the coast, they stayed in the lower 80s. Port Bolivar, 82. Crystal Beach, 83. High Island was 82 as well. Temperatures right now sitting in the upper 60s to lower 70s. We should look for some middle to upper 60s for the lakes tonight. And for the Triangle, steady right now in the 70s. We do expect lower 70s throughout the Golden Triangle area tonight as we move into early Monday morning. Temperatures hourly as we continue to move on. Again, staying steady in the 70s. And you see the rain percentage picking up. It's only 10%. As we move into tomorrow morning, we may see a little bit coming in. I'll have more details next on my full forecast. Thank you for that, Aaron. Now, a man from Orange is our first winner of the $250 Visa gas card, and you still have plenty of chances to get your hands on one. We announced our first winner at 6 p.m. Friday in the giveaway contest that started Thursday on KFDM News at 6 and continues through May 25th only at 6 p.m. weeknights. Here's what you need to do to enter. Watch for the secret word in our 6 p.m. news each Monday through Friday. Then log on to KFDM.com forward slash contest to enter. Again, the contest runs each weeknight in our 6 p.m. news through May 25th. New tonight, a new downtown grows event is combining a Cinco de Mayo celebration with a chance to shop local small businesses. KFDM's Hannah Spikes attended the event and spoke to vendors about the importance of having this celebration. With Cinco de Mayo approaching, an event on Lincoln Avenue in downtown Groves highlighted Hispanic heritage and local small businesses. Angelica Zafala of Three Paws & Co. appreciates the togetherness it creates. I think it's really important for, especially as a Hispanic community here in like Groves or in the area, um, it's very important to like build a community um, where we 
we all help each other and it's also good to like get out there and show our culture. A culture that helps the Southeast Texas community flourish. Like having an event like this where it's mainly Hispanic businesses that are here, everybody gets to come and they can see like what we offer. Not just like stereotypical Mexican things, but also like us as Americans here being here, like creating our own things that are like a mix of both. You know? The coordinators of this event love seeing all the small businesses get together. We're here to promote small businesses, bring out the different cultures. It's really important to support each other, and I think people forget that sometimes. We're not against each other. We're here to support everybody. And events like this turn supporting each other into a joyous time for all. In Groves, I'm Hannah Spikes reporting. And if you did not have a chance to make it out to today's event in Groves for the Cinco de Mayo celebration event, coordinators say they have multiple events in the works that will be announced soon. The Beaumont Police Department spent time giving back to the kids. They hosted the Cops and Kids Fun Day at Pearlstein Park in Beaumont's West End. There were games and a chance to spend time with officers. Beaumont Police will hold these types of events once a month when they'll just pop up at a park in the city and provide fun activities and treats to children. We want them to know that police officers are their friends and protectors. We're here to keep them safe. We don't want them to be afraid of us. And so that's the idea behind our entire Cops and Kids program. We gotta go get an ice cream cone. A snow cone. <laughs> a snow cone. <laughs> and the Beaumont police were not the only ones in attendance. The Southeast Texas Food Bank was also at the event giving out boxes of food. Now, two children were killed in a tragic house fire in Galveston. A bystander tried to save the children, but it was just too dangerous, said police. Bill Barras reports. Cell phone footage shows the flames bursting from an upstairs window. Firefighters on the ground can be seen battling the blaze. James Rogers' house is connected to that very home. He said the children inside were family members. They were my uh, cousin and niece. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Um, what are their names? Logan and Dave. Fire officials say reports of the fire came in at about 2.35 a.m. Children and their father were inside the home at the time. Dad able to get out. The children were stuck inside. One neighbor telling us they scrambled to get the word out and asked do we not show his face. One of my friends went and tried to crawl um, up there to like get in the window, but police told him to get down, so he got down. Their worst fear confirmed when they say mom made it back home a short time later. She made it about 20 minutes later, and I could just... I could tell her what she was screaming, it wasn't good news. Veronica Von Blanc, a neighbor nearby, telling us the entire community is heartbroken. The family, in their thoughts and prayers. You see something like this and it's just so sad. It really is, it's just sad. It is still unclear how this fire started. We have an update tonight to a story we reported during our earlier broadcast. First responders have recovered the body of a missing 17-year-old who was fishing in the water near Freeport. The teenager went missing on Saturday, and today around 5.30, the Coast Guard helicopter spotted the body in the middle of the San Luis Pass. The 17-year-old has been out weighed fishing. His identity has not yet been released. Challenges at the southern border are piling up from record numbers of people coming over to dwindling resources to more and more drugs and even criminals believed to be getting in. Sinclair National Correspondent Christine Frazal brings us the latest on what's expected to happen next. After multiple appearances before committees on Capitol Hill last week, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas spent Sunday answering more questions about the state of our southern border. With the potential the pandemic era policy Title 42 may soon be lifted as early as May 23rd. When it's removed, you're going to see more numbers, right? We very well could, and we, we estimate that we will. Those estimates at around 18,000 migrants a day, with Secretary Mayorkas laying out a strategy.